Here we are in lesson 8. Up until now, we've used all kinds of functions of the M5 stack and saved our programs to the device. It would be cool to carry them around, and we can do with the M5 stack watch kit. But a watch would not be complete without a way to keep track of time. So today we're going to do a little bit more of an advanced program where we can set the time and adjust it. Let's get started with it. So here we are in UI Flow and we're going to be making our watch code. So I'm going to make a project called watch. And let's have a think about what we're going to need for this program. Remember when we talked about storing values and counting up values and resetting values, basically changing any value over time during a program we need variables. And of course, we're going to need variables for our watch. How many variables though? If we think about it, on a regular watch, we generally see the hours and the minutes and perhaps even the seconds. So we're going to need these three variables. So let's first start by creating three variables. Okay, first we will create an hour variable or hours. Okay, now we're going to create a mins variable, short for minutes, and SECS for seconds. Okay, so now we have our hours, min, minutes, and seconds values we want to set them to zero at the very start of our program. So let's go here, let's duplicate three, change them to hours, minutes, and seconds. Okay, and then drag our maths blocks in, zero, zero, and zero. Okay, so we're going to need our loop as usual. Now, we know that in a minute there are 60 seconds, and in an hour there are 60 minutes, and then in a day there are 24 hours. Some clocks are only set to 12 hours and then reset, or some clocks are 24 hours. We're going to try and make a 24 hour clock. We'll need a way to set our clock first to the current time. While there are more accurate ways to do this, this is just a simple test of how we can control variables and get other variables to change on the state of other variables. Okay, so we're going to need separate buttons to change the values of the hours, minutes, and seconds so that we can set our hours, minutes, and seconds initial value. Okay, so we'll set our buttons to A, B, and C. And then we'll make sure that once they are pressed, we can change the hours by one. We can change the minutes by one. And we'll change the seconds by one also. So now we can set the initial time. Our clock will start at zero, but say if we wanted to set it to the current time, it's currently seven o'clock for me, then I could set this, the hours to seven. Okay, now to look at the main part of our code, we're going to need a bunch of if, if conditions. So we put our first if condition in there. What we're going to do now is nest some of these if conditions so that when the first condition is met, the second one will continue on from that and so on. First, we wanna set that if our seconds, let's see, if our seconds, and then com a comparator block. Okay, so we know that even though there are 60 seconds in a minute, our clock would usually never show 60 seconds. So 
So we'll set it so that if the seconds are more or equal to 59, then we need to change the minute by one. And also we'll need to set the seconds back to zero. Okay, and now for our second if condition, which we'll place inside the first, This time, if the minutes, first we can copy this block and then change this to minutes. So if the minutes are more than equal to 59, then we'll change the hour. Note that we'll need to set this to minus one. Otherwise, the seconds will automatically jump to one instead of showing zero. Okay, for the next one, we'll change the hours by one and then set our minutes back to zero. Then for our third logic block, we're going to set the amount of hours. Okay, let's duplicate this it again. So this time, if the hours are more than or equal to 24, then we'll set everything back to zero. Okay, so these are all our logic, but every time we go through these loops, every time the computer checks if these conditions are true, we need to wait a second so that the seconds can accurate, accurately go up. Then we'll change the seconds by one. and then we'll display all of these to the screen. So we're going to now add six separate labels, three for the time and three for the dots between, oh, uh, two for the dots between, sorry, the colons between. Okay, and then we can make these bigger. Maybe I'll set this to around 40, that should do might need to play around with the position of these. Uh, yep, set that to 40 again. And then I can double, double click this to duplicate it. Double click to duplicate the text. It might look all messy and squashed together now, but once our numbers are ticking away, The text won't be as long. Okay, we can set these text to placeholder numbers anyway. Let's set this to zero. Okay, arrange these around a little bit. Make it nice and even level with each other. And there we go. Okay, and now we need to use the UI label elements and pop them at the bottom of our loop. So first label, label one will be hours. So we'll pop that variable in there. Then label two, we'll set that Oh, it should be label four, sorry. We'll set that to minutes. 
and then finally we'll create the last label block where are we zoom out a little bit make things easier for myself and then finally we have label 5 okay label 5 and then we'll set that to seconds okay so now we can test this and see if it does what we expect it to do here is our finished watch program now we can take the M5 stack around with us keep the track of time and also show off all of those cool programs that we made before. We could also think of how to make the watch cooler, adding lights or sound. See what you can come up with. And remember, if you get stuck, you can always ask our help in the comments. See you in the next video.